Hey family, it's Regina. Welcome, if this is your first time, welcome back if you're a repeat visitor. Glad to have you here. So today's episode is moving us, or moving me more into the note or chord declutter. If you know my story, I'm working my way down from 800 fragrances to approximately 200 under the direction of Spirit who told me I need to do this on social media. Well, I've done my first round, which was by houses or themes, designers, etc. Now I'm actually going through and doing notes or chords, grouping what I have in my collection together. And I'm gonna take you through the same thing, which was yay or nay, stay or go. Because other than a few exceptions like orange blossom and vanilla, how many fragrances of one note or chord do I really need? We're gonna find out. Today is going to be Osmanthus. Episode number two, Osmanthus. And I have 17 fragrances here that I'm gonna take you through my process. Hope you'll stick around. And as I like to say, welcome. Osmanthus. I'm just gonna read you what I wrote because I'm pulling this off a perfumer website. Osmanthus has a mouth-watering, honeyed, apricot peachy top note, often used to obtain a floral fuzziness and palpable softness. It is a rare Asian flower with a complex fruity floral scent. The top note typically is honeyed, apricot peachy. Other notes, plums, prunes, leather suede, hay, and brine, and its other characteristics can be creamy, exotic, and rich. Now, I always view Osmanthus as a flower, and I'm hoping that's what I'm gonna get, but I don't know. We're, we're just gonna start. I, like I said, I have 17 of these. And the first one is a Middle Eastern fragrance, recent to my collection, which is a job. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, see, this is so nice. This to me is a yes. Definitely floral, sweet. To me, be, this is an easy wear fragrance, honestly. I would say this is a yes. Since I don't know what Osmantha smells like, I can't really say if I detect it or not. Let's keep going and see if I see similarities because that's what's gonna tell me that the Osmanthus is coming through. If you saw my first episode, I did the note of Divana, which is oftentimes paired with Osmanthus. And that's why this sort of led to be episode number two. Oh, I'm not even telling you guys what I'm looking at. You guys, this is Leonora by Mind Games, a fantastic fragrance that I bought late last year. I think I have worn it once, which you, you, there's no dent. There's no dent whatsoever. I thought I loved it when I bought it. Let me see. Let us see if I really do. Okay. Ah, oh, yeah, I do. I am getting definitely a very floral, sweet floral coming from here. Mm. And I do think I see a similarity with the Ajaib. Yes. There is a similar floral note that is in both of these right now. And it's just, and I do like both of them, which is why they are a definite yes. Okay, let me pull out my next one. Middle, another Middle Eastern, which I gotta be honest, it's not going anywhere. This is called Washa Washa. Picked this up in Dubai last year, became an immediate love. I pair it with Ferragamo's Amo Perle. I love it. Okay, let's see. Mm. Yes. Similar to Leonora in terms of the floral that's coming through, I, I get the similarity in the florals with these three. So I think Osmanthus might end up being a love of mine. That, that's why I'm gonna enjoy this series, this part, because now the three of them may have other notes that are similar, don't get me wrong, but I'm definitely coming, it's coming through with a very mouth-watering floral note. It's floral to me. I'm not getting like a, an apricot peachy note. I'm definitely getting more of a, of a, a creamy mouth-watering floral in these three. Here's another one that I, when I got it, I liked, which is Less by Boy Smells. Is Osmanthus a note? What do you guys think of Osmanthus? Do you have a favorite fragrance that has it in it? Oh, now see this, I am getting, this is interesting because I am getting a note of peachy apricot -y. definitely getting that, some honey. 
but then there's something that makes this lean masculine to me more of a kind of an aftershave there's something there's the other notes in here leave this to be masculine cologne to me i still like it it's just not as floral as the other three i still like it though all right so so far none of these are going anywhere but that's because i know i already know that these ones up when i pulled them out i knew that they were favorites that i liked i already knew that i was setting myself up <laughs> next one is Soradora's Janny. As you know, this is new this year. Everybody and their mother went crazy for it, as long, along with the other one, I believe, which was Mallow. I have not worn Janny. I think I like it. I don't remember. <laughs> crazy, huh? I know, crazy. Oh. Whoa. That is coming up. Janny is a little, a little over the top, actually, for me. It's, it is creamy. It is more of a gourmand. It is, I, I don't get a whole lot of floral here. There's, there's a bready note to me. Maybe that's what, that's it's coming in as hay, but no, it is definitely, it's definitely bready. Different, so different than the first four. So different. I, I probably not sure I would say that I'm getting honey or apricot or it's just, that is that is a gourmand. Janny is a gourmand fragrance, the other four were not. Here we have this one, Golden Drop, that I got in Turkey last year. Let's see if I can even get this off, because this one's a little, this one's, a, this one's not a spray. This one is actually a, like this. <laughs> Crazy, right? This smells like nothing. Okay, this is a gone. This, there's no scent to here whatsoever. I don't know if it's dead, don't know what happened to it, but that's a go. Okay, well, you got one. <laughs> you got one. All right, you guys, talk to me about, I have not been tracking perfumes as seriously as I was, only because I got busy. You know, if you, one of my early visits, I talked about the deer in my backyard. Well, it turns out, let me give you the update on the deer, y'all. Let me give you the update before I continue with another fragrance. So, deer, turns out, had a baby. And she was putting her baby in the side hedge of my yard. And I know that because when I went to my neighbor to talk to my neighbor about something totally different, she mentioned to me that her camera was picking up that the deer, the doe, was bringing her baby into my side hedge every day around 4 a.m. And the baby was apparently sitting there. And of course, I was telling people this story and people were freaked out, but it turns out that that is what they do. The first 30 days of a baby deer, they are actually hidden by their mother. She puts them somewhere where they can be protected from predators. She goes out, she feeds. The baby patiently waits for the mama to come back and feed him, take him, whatever. And the reason for that is because for the first 30 days, the baby's legs are not strong enough to run or jump from a predator. That's a safety measure. So if you see a deer, a baby deer looking abandoned, leave him alone. I learned that. But that experience was exciting because the mother was still coming into my yard to chill. Well, I didn't know that. I removed all of my trees because I'm getting a new fence. So now I have no shade in my backyard. It looks kind of like a desert. All of which is to say I'm getting a new fence in a couple of weeks. It's been distracting. Twice I have disturbed the baby deer on my side hedge. Obviously it's big enough because he bolted across my street and went bolting, running into another group of trees in my another neighbor's yard. And that's hopefully where the baby deer is. Anyway, but I've been distracted with, with the yard thing. I've been distracted with um, finishing up my bathroom. I have finished my master bath, yay. I have been spending the last three weeks finishing out my guest bathroom. Huge yay, I think it looks amazing, I absolutely love it. I had family here for um, Fourth of July weekend, so I've just been had other things going on. I haven't been able to really keep my eye on the perfume prize, if you will. <laughs> so tell me, what are the what are the new fragrances? Because I know there's, I'm sure there's a, <laughs> a buttload or boatload coming out of new fragrances that I have not been following. It just seems like there is such a churn. I don't, how do you guys do it? Do you, do you get decants or samples of every new fragrance or, or all the ones you love? How do you guys not go crazy? I know for me, I'm making a very conscious effort to wear my fragrances every day, different ones. I don't know if I ever told you, but I have a weekly or monthly calendar where I do a calendar. I have a theme. I love themes. 
I guess I do, I love themes, where I come up with a different fragrance theme Monday through Friday, and then on Saturday and Sunday, my theme is basically spontaneous Saturday or special Sunday, and I wear whatever I want. But it is because I'm trying to wear them and smell them on me and see if I really like them. So that's what I've been doing, but I'm doing it with my, what I have. I'm not buying very many new ones. I don't think I bought any new bottles this month. Oh no, that's not true. I did buy a fragrance from an independent perfumer called Pink Mahogany. Fantastic fragrance. I might have to review that. It's so good. And I also got Veronica Gabay's Souvenir de T -T Tunisie. But that was, a re that was actually a replacement for a bottle I bought in June. Anyway, so I haven't been buying much because for this very reason. How many of the same notes do I need? Next, this is Grand Palais, which I already had already done. This is from Al Jazeera, I believe. And I had done this and this was a keeper for me, but now it's in the group of the Osmanthus. Oh, I see it. There's a similarity. This is Janny, by the way. So remember, this is the one I said was a gourmand bready fragrance, but there is a there's a note that is very similar that I'm picking up in the Al Jazeera. Oh, nice. This is, and that was less because that was the one that smells more shampoo-y, but still similar. And so the Osmanthus is coming through. I really do like it. This is, for me, this would be an evening scent, a more formal scent. This would be something that I wouldn't reach for every day just because I think it's, it just seems a little heavier. It just seems a little bit more trying, trying so hard. So yes, this is, this is huh, also stay. Here comes another one. This one is Pen Lai by Bourdois. The funny thing is when I first went through these fragrances that I had in my collection, this one ended up staying. I don't really remember why, but I think, I know I like the back. I love the design on it, but I'm not really sure. I don't remember the scent, right? So let me see now what I think. I do get the similarity. This is a more unisex, yeah. But I, I smell a very light osmanthus note in here. This to me is a go. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't need this one, if I'm honest. Oh. Next one, Ellie Saab Essence Santal. I'm just gonna make it interesting that this has osmanthus in it. I thought this was mainly Santal, but what do I know? <laughs> Anyway, so what, what are the latest and greatest fragrances? For those of you who are vanilla lovers or, or gourmand lovers, see, the, to me, this smells like nuts. I don't get anything similar. No, to me, it smells like peanuts. Or maybe there's a slight whatever. I like this for a different reason. This to me is it would be a great fall winter scent. I mean, I like the smell of the nuts. I, I like the Santal, which is a sandalwood. Interesting. I, I'm not really sure this should this should have been in this grouping. Next one. Whoops. Next one is the Trish McAvoy Blackberry and Vanilla Musk, which I had previously checked out in my female designer video, and this one stayed. And I, to me, blackberry and vanilla is a combination that I know I absolutely, absolutely love. Oh, but I think I didn't like this one because it leaks. See, to me, okay, there's a little bit of, I get the little bit of the apricotty honey, peachy note right there. But to me, I, I definitely get more of the blackberry, which, which is good, and not as much of the musk. Now, so many fragrances have musk, and I am one of the few people who I don't find, I still to this day don't find musk to be a clean fragrance. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the kind of perfume lover who says musk is a clean scent. To me, musk still smells like you need a bath or it smells like BO. And on me, it does tend to give me that, I need to wash this off, I smell like I stink. I know, it's crazy. I, I get it, you guys love that, and I, I love it for you. <laughs> but I don't love it for me. All right, this one, Pinrose Bold Soul is another one that has Osmanthus in it. And another one that I had recently opted to keep in my collection because out of the Pinrose fragrances that I had, I believe this was one of the ones that I did like. This is lovely, but I don't need it because I have six others over here that have a similar 
similar scent profile to my nose right now. Bold Soul, lovely, but is not a need for me. It's not a love, it's a like. And I think that's what I'm getting at is that the other ones that I'm putting over here that are staying are loves for different reasons. This one, uh, Acro Infused. You know I picked this up in Belgium back in, in April. This is their tea fragrance. I don't think I remember it being, I don't remember there being floral in there, but what, what do I, I don't remember. <laughs> Let's just go for it. No. I would not, I don't see any similarity in this. This to me is an all tea fragrance. I'm putting it over here. This will come back with the teas. This one is The Scent Private Accord. Hugo Boss, which because I had all of these, I think this is one of the ones that was on my chopping block. Let me see what I think now. Because I did love them all, but I preferred the, the, the Absolute or the, I forget, but it was more of a chocolate scent. Ooh, this is nice. Okay, I'm keeping this. This might be the one I was thinking of. <laughs> that was wrong. <laughs> it's staying, it's cool. But this is more chocolate. I don't get, I don't get osmanthus in this. I, this to me, the chocolate is overwhelming. And that's what I'm saying is that this would, if I had known that, I wouldn't have brought that out with this group because I'm not getting this, I'm not getting the same note, but that's okay. Let's look at this one. I love, you know, I love the police. I love the police, not because of the fragrances, but because of the head. <laughs> and this one is so cute. I forget which one this is. This is exotic something. I'll, you know, you know I'm putting it up in the, in the things. I'm just babbling, you guys, because number one, I'm happy to be talking to you again, hanging out with you, chilling, talking about my deer, talking about my yard, talking about the fence I'm getting ready to put up. And I'm putting up the fence in anticipation of eventually I will landscape the backyard, make it something a little bit more entertainment focused. Here we go, which police is this, which, yes, whatever. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. I like the head, but I don't need this one because again, it smells very similar to the other ones that I'm keeping. I can I can smell the osmanthus in it, very nice, but not needed. This last one is from a influencer, Fumi Monet. She did Exalté, this lovely, and I only have, I can only get this, which I'm really glad I have. I'm pretty sure it's not going anywhere because she's not making any more of these. She paid for her own fragrance out of her own money. Let's see if I can smell the osmanthus in it. Ooh, yeah. This is interesting because this smells very similar to Ambrosia Imperial by Navitas. And that could be because that had Devana in it. It may even have Osmanthus, I don't, but it didn't come up on my list. And, and this, they, they smell similar. This does not smell the same as my other fragrances, which means probably that the osmanthus is a small um, percent of the formula as compared to the other ones. And that's it, you guys. What do you think? What do you think of, what do you think of my new, my round two? Because on round two, we're gonna be mixing in everything. If it has a note, if it's Middle Eastern, if it's design, if it's niche, they're all coming into the party and then they'll all decide from there. This is not one of these things where it's gonna be Middle Eastern only. I know Middle Easterns are still huge. Y'all, I haven't even bought any new Middle Easterns and there's so many out there, which, can you tell me which ones you think I should buy? Should I try some? Although I don't have any room. <laughs> I still don't have any room. So I really shouldn't be thinking about buying anything, adding anything to the, into the mess until I have more space in my closet. Which, have you noticed? I haven't been in my closet that much because my closet is overflowing. I have, it's everywhere. So I need to, I need to pack up some more boxes of fragrances. I am, guys, getting rid of only three of the osmanthus fragrances because four of them are actually going to come back for other notes and nine are staying with me and actually as i look at them i really do like these 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 probably are up there with loves for me thank you for staying here thank you for being here with me hope you enjoyed this give me your thoughts in the comments what should i look at are there any new fragrances i need to smell are there any new middle eastern fragrances i need to smell and i'll see you in the next episode Hopefully I'll get more of these out because we still got a lot to go through. <laughs> Until next time, guys. Cheers.